Developing tonight, the mainstream media may be targeting Donald Trump on a new issue after polls show the Republican frontrunner picking up support with evangelicals. A survey out of South Carolina showing Trump at 30% with this key voting group. And not long after that was released, Trump started taking what some media outlets are calling gotcha questions about his faith. Here is one example. An Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible, I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. Tony Perkins is president of the Family Research Council. And earlier, I asked him what he is hearing from the evangelicals. Tony Perkins is the president of the Family Research Council and with me now. Tony, good to see you. So what do you make of it? A lot of the folks say, how, how could Donald Trump be leading with conservatives, with evangelicals, given his prior positions, some of which I mentioned? Well, Megan, Donald Trump is the result of a Republican leadership here in Washington, D.C., that has been playing political footsies with Barack Obama rather than fisticuffs. And people are simply tired of it, and that includes evangelicals. They're, they're, they're tired of the lip service, and they want action, and, and Donald Trump is promising it. Now, whether he delivers on that and whether he continues his conversation with evangelicals and corrects some of this uh, miscommunication or these uh, missed signals that he's been sending, is yet to be seen. What do you, I mean, it's interesting to have, you know, at a, a man like Trump who openly admits he doesn't remember if he asked God for forgiveness. Uh, he says, I'm mm -hmm. not sure I have. I just go on and try to do a better job from there, but I don't bring God into the picture. Versus you've got Mike Huckabee, a former pastor up there, Marco Rubio, John Kasich, both of whom are, are devout, and many others are as well. <laughs> First off, evangelical voters are more complex than people give them credit to. They don't vote just for who goes to church on Sunday. They vote for someone who they feel confident will lead this nation forward. Did you ever get behind a candidate who, who used to support not only abortion but partial birth abortion? I would have a difficult time unless I see evidence that there's some change. Now, I will tell you, Megan, I've been in politics. I've held public office. I've known a lot of politicians. Past performance is a pretty good indicator of future performance. Not all the time. There can be a, a change that takes place that can explain a transformation. But in most cases, what you've seen in the past is what you'll get in the future. All right. Speaking of past, um, Josh Duggar, who had troubles in his past as a 15-year-old, which were well-documented in, you know, June. And, and I had my interview with the Duggar family. Now, he worked for the Family Research Council lobbying arm. And when that emerged as fact, he resigned. You basically agreed to part ways. And now it has come out that while he was in his post, so not when he was 15, but while he was working for you guys, he was cheating on his wife. He had an online porn addiction. He's admitted to it while she was pregnant. Now, porn stars are coming out and saying that they had interludes with him. And you know people are looking at not just Duggar, but the Family Research Council and groups like yours saying, hypocrites, hypocrites. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Well, first, Megan, I say I am, uh, I am grieved and angered over Josh's choices and his actions. Uh, and this is a, a painful reminder and warning that living without integrity has destructive effects upon people that you care about and people that you love. And to that point of those who would say, well, look, let's just jettison this, this moral standard, which is falling out of favor in our culture today. But, you know, people may not have a care for or concern about a moral standard until they're hurt by those who fall short or break a moral standard. I, I bet tonight, watching your program, there's a husband, a wife, a, a teenager, a college student whose who's spouse or parent uh, was among the 30 million plus names that was on the Ashley Madison list. And, and they're hurt, they're broken, they feel betrayed. And, and ask them if they, they want to live in a society that rejects any moral standard. I would say that they would probably say no. But the good news is, there's hope, there's healing for them, uh, that God loves them. In fact, God sent his son Jesus to this earth to die for them. And, to, and he himself was betrayed. He understands what it's like to be betrayed. So I, I would simply say to those who have been hurt by those who have broken that standard and mm -hmm. betrayed them, that there's help. And but there's, you know, there's you know that there's a particular, it, it really rubs people the wrong way when the person who sinned, 
is somebody who espouses family values and lectures others no, no about question. their lifestyles. I mean, you, you've, no, you've no said question. that you believe if you make this your, your profession, your life's calling, you are held to a higher standard. You, you are, but Megan, we have to realize the Bible, and, and, and I embrace the Bible as the Word of God. It says we have all fallen short. We've all sinned. Now, we, we cannot use that as an excuse to live in sin. We have to turn from that and embrace God's way. Does that mean we're perfect once we accept Him as our Savior and the forgiveness that comes with that? No, we're not. We're all prone to fall. Look, I've been a Marine. I've been a police officer. I've been a politician. I've been a pastor. I have seen firsthand the devastating effects, and I used to think, how could a man ever do that? How could a woman ever cheat on her husband? How could a husband ever do that to his wife? You know what? Unless someone is daily walking in a relationship with God and working to keep himself or herself from the influences, it happens. Tony, I appreciate you coming on and talking about it. Okay, Megan. Also tonight, actress Kirstie Alley is creating a political stir with her latest remarks on the 2016 presidential race. Brian Kilmeade will bring us the story behind that. Still looks angry. <laughs> Very angry. <laughs> he can't hear us. And up next, to see, see what inspired Hillary Clinton to compare some Republicans to terrorists today in the fallout that came after. Mark Thiessen, here on that. 